I want to tell you about something special that we've got coming up July the 20th through the 22nd. We've got our annual Joyful Hearts Women's Conference. It's going to be a special time this year. And I just want to take an opportunity to invite all of you ladies to come and bring some friends. It's going to be a good time. God's going to really bless. We've got a special speaker named Candace Payne. Some of you know her from online and uh, she's going to be speaking Thursday night and Friday night, and then Saturday our own Lori Jones is going to be speaking. Hey, uh, I think it'll be a time that God will really refresh you and really do something in your life. So I hope you can all come. If you, if you haven't signed up yet, just give our church office a call, and we'll help you get signed up. Hello, I'm Pastor Hank, and I believe God wants to do something special for you today. Would that be all right with you if he did? Well, let's go to him and ask him. Father, right now, we come before you. Lord, you know everyone that's listening to this program. You know everything that's going on in, in all of our lives. And, Lord, only you have our answers that we need. And so I'm asking you today to do something special in everyone that's listening to this. Do something special in their life that only you could do. And use that goodness, God, to draw us all closer to you. Lord, I thank you, and I just believe that you're already touching people and helping them. And Lord, let this broadcast, let this program be something that you can use to help them even more. We thank you, and we pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Oh, God's so good. His, his commitment to us is so great. He, he loves us. And I wish that I had enough words to be able to tell you how much God loves you. But you know, some things there just aren't enough words to express. And I've learned that the only way I can know how much God loves me is to experience it. And I'm praying and believing that that happens more and more in your life every day. You know, I talk with a lot of people. And, you know, it's amazing how many of us are Christians we know we're saved. We know we're going to heaven. But if you, if you ask us and, 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 and put us on the spot a little bit, we're not quite sure that we're really where we ought to be with God. You know, I want to share a message, part of a message with you today that, that I basically ask the question, what's stopping you? What's stopping you from being all you can be for God? What's stopping you from, from being where you think you should be with God what is it that's in there that's hindering that relationship what is it that's stopping you from being all in for God hey if you got a few minutes listen to this and see what the Lord would speak to your heart and I'll be back and we'll share some more I want to read you some verses here I'm not going to put anything on the screen I'm just going to talk to you a few minutes and uh Somebody said, sure, no, I really will just talk a few minutes. And uh, uh, I, I just, God is just so amazing. And, and uh, he's just doing so many things in, in our lives, in my life, I hope in your life. And uh, he, he is doing things whether we realize it or not. But he's so good. I, wanted, I just wanted to read you something out of Ephesians. Uh, and I won't put anything on the screen today. I'll just, I just want to talk to you for a few minutes. But it says, uh, Paul says here, he says, And you he made alive. How many here are saved today? How many got Jesus in your heart? If you don't, that's why you're here. You came to get Jesus in your heart, okay? So before you leave, say, Jesus, I give you my life. Come into my heart. Do something with my life, okay? Matter of fact, everybody say that. Jesus, come into my life. I want to live for you. Take my life and do something with it. I make you my Lord. Now, Paul's talking about you, okay? And you he made alive <laughs> who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. You walked among, among whom also we all, all, we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of the flesh and fulfilling 
the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, just as the others. So he's saying you were lost, there was no hope for you, you were, you were dead in your sins and trespasses, and then I love verse 4. It says, but God. Huh? But God. How many ever faced something in your life and, 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 and it looked like it was all over, it looked like there was no hope, looks like, like there was nothing, but God showed up. He says, but God who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in, in our trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ, for by grace you have been saved, and raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace by being kind to us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God. It's not of works, if it were, we could boast. <clears throat> For we are his workmanship. I, I love this verse. It says, we are his workmanship. He created us in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Do you understand what he said there? He said, we are his workmanship. And he created us in Christ so that we could walk in all of his good works, all of his goodness that he prepared for us beforehand, before you ever got here. Man, how cool is that? That God would take us, no hope, dead, no, nothing to look forward to, nothing to live for, on our way to hell, he would take and intervene for us and give his son for us. Wow. That's just got to be the coolest thing ever. Every time I read that verse. I used to read that verse and think it was saying, he created me so I could do good works. He said, no, he said he created me so that he could walk, or so that I could walk in all the goodness that he already had ready for me before I got here. Can I say something to you today? God cares about you. He loves you. You're, you're, you're the most important thing to him. Think about that. You're so important to him that he gave the closest thing to his heart for you. Mm. Well, this week I was talking, I was talking to a friend of mine. I was talking to him because he hadn't saved yet. And, and I said, yet. Did you get that? He hadn't saved yet. And, and so I was talking to him about the Lord, and, and, I, and I talked through all this stuff, and he had questions, and I talked through all this stuff. And, 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 and he, we got done, and he, he didn't, he didn't want to take the next step. And I thought, I thought, to myself, I thought, I just explained to you how you could live for eternity, be with God and never be separated again. What's stopping you? What's stopping you? That question has just been going through my spirit all week long because I was watching a a, a, a gentleman on TV and, and he was healing some folks and man I was just all excited and I was all in it and, and I said Lord I want to flow in that way I want to flow in that anointing I, I want to do that and a little voice came inside of me and said what's stopping you so I want to ask you today what's stopping you uh you know it's amazing. Uh, if you if you talk to 
if you talk to it. Well, first, if you're not saved, what's stopping you? If you've never made a decision for Jesus, what, what, what's stopping you? What's holding you back? What's the deal? It's not something you have to do. Well, what are you afraid you have to give up? What are you, what are you afraid you're going to have to change? What is it, what is it that it's worth, that, that's worth holding on to? What, what is it that's so important that you've got to hold on to it that you would miss eternity and spend eternity in hell? What, what is, what's stopping you? See, somebody in here, and I don't know who you are, and, but you're here for a reason today, and God's dealt with you, and so many times in your life you've almost surrendered to Him. You've almost given Him your life. You've almost said, okay, I make you my Lord. You almost have done that several times, but something stopped you. Today's your day. Today's your day. Don't get stopped today. When that same thing raises up in you that starts to talk you out of it, that starts to get you to hesitate, that starts to get you to wait, just say, nope, 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 nope. I'm, I'm doing it this time, Lord. Huh? What's stopping you? Why don't you push it out of the way? If you are saved, you know, it's amazing how many Christians... How many people that are going to heaven that I talk to, and 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 I and I and I ask them how they are with the Lord, and it's amazing how many of us don't think we're right. It's amazing how many of us think we're missing the mark. It's amazing how many of us think think uh, you know that that that. Well, if I if I was just a little better, or if I was just you know. It's amazing how many of us don't think we're where we're supposed to be with God. Did you ever notice that? I spent a lot of my life saved, but not feeling like I hit the mark yet. If you're saved, let me ask you a question. What's stopping you from being all you can be for God? You hear me? What's stopping you? What's, what's stopping you from being where you think you should be? Now, what, what, what's stopping you from having that relationship with God that something inside of you is yearning for, something in, inside of you is crying out for? What, what is it that's stopping you? What is it that's stopping you from being committed, as committed as you know you should be? I talked to somebody the other day, and, and they, they've come to church for a while, and they, and they told me, they said, we'll, we'll be back, but, but we, just, we just had to back off a little bit because it was just, you know, we, we just, everybody was wanting us to be committed, and we just weren't ready to be committed and I thought, what is it that you're holding on to that's more important than being committed to the Lord? Huh? What is it that's stopping you? You see, every one of us has something in us that's stopping us from being where we think we ought to be. I'm just saying it's being where we're supposed to be is just a decision away. Huh? I talked with a, with a gentleman uh, the other day that, that, that he had received a big inheritance and, and he, for some reason, he, he, he didn't even know why he wouldn't come to church. He didn't even know why he wasn't committed. But as we talked, I was able to see He's afraid he's going to have to give up some of this inheritance. What's stopping you? I visited with somebody a couple of weeks ago, and, 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 and they, they, they quit coming because they were afraid they were going to have to tithe and give. 
Well, the thing was, I don't know if you tithe or I don't know if you give. I mean, I'm probably the only one that really, uh, uh, that, that spiritually I, I could have the right to check and see. But I don't check on you. I mean, I just figure everybody loves God and everybody's doing what they're supposed to do. And, and if I think that way and treat you that way, you know what? You'll start doing what you're supposed to do. Huh? But my point was this, is, 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 is this thing was money and they didn't even know what was stopping them. Talk to somebody else and they just didn't feel that they had time Talk to somebody else and they were afraid. They were afraid that they might have to do something that they didn't want to do. They might have to commit to somebody. Remember the old days? I remember being a kid and, and knowing I had a call on my life and I was scared to death that God was going to make me go to Africa and be a missionary. So, man, I ran. I said, man, I don't want to do all that stuff. Isn't it amazing? that we have things in us that stop us from being there. Sometimes it's just our thinking. Sometimes we just don't think we're good enough. Sometimes we just don't think we're qualified. Could I share something with you? I read this morning in first or in Colossians, the first chapter, and, and I was reading along there, and it said, and God has qualified you to be a partaker of the inheritance. I thought, how cool is that? Hank doesn't have to qualify anymore. I'm just saying, what's stopping you? Is it worth it? What's What's stopping you from being all in? Hmm? I hope all of you are all in. Let, let me ask you something. A bunch of you worked at this VBS all week. I came and watched a couple nights, and I'm telling you what, I was blessed. And, and I was blessed by these little kids. I mean, they were having so much fun, and I thought, man, they're making memories. They, they'll never forget this as long as they live. But I was blessed when I was watching the workers because you know what? You guys came and you were all in. You were all in. How did that make you feel? <sighs> huh? Even if you didn't do anything right, you were all in. And because you were all in, you were part owner. These are our kids. This is my church. We're making a difference. We're doing something for God. Woo! Glory to God. All in. All in. And I know I'm preaching to the choir because the majority of our people here are all in. The ones that aren't all in, I already left. But some of them are coming back. And there's some new ones coming in that want to be all in. But, 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 so, so I, you know, try, listen to what I'm saying, but, but what I find in my own life, every day I have to battle to stay all in. Do you? I mean, it's not a tough battle. It's just a decision away. I mean, I have to decide, are you going to get up and go visit them are you going to get up and spend some time with God? Are you going to go do this, what I'm telling you to do, or not? How many know my flesh doesn't want to do nothing my spirit wants to do? Huh? My head doesn't want to do nothing my, my, my spirit wants to do. My flesh goes, oh, you're tired, and, and I'm lazy. And, and my head goes, oh, yeah, but there's a whole bunch of other things you've got to do first. So, so, so I, I have to, like Paul said, I have to put all that under every day. I don't know. I, I love to, I shouldn't say this. I don't, I don't gamble, but I love to watch. I watch poker on TV. 
huh? I got some favorites, you know, Doyle Brunson and some of the some of the old timers, and and I don't know. I, and, and listen, this isn't an excuse for you to go to the casino, okay? I don't go to the casino. I'm not condemning you for doing it. Well, maybe a little bit, but uh, I don't. You know, I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not really pushing that. But I just. The part I like is when somebody's sitting there playing and they go all in, all in, and I go, "Woo, that took some guts." To tell God, I'm all in. Take some guts. Take some guts. I don't know. Ask you a question. Don't answer it out loud, but do you want to be all in? If you'll check, every one of us want that. That's what that, that's what that thing in there is pulling us towards pulling us towards God, and we want to be all in. We don't want to hold nothing back. We just don't want, to, we don't want to mess with all this stuff that weights us down. We just want to be all in. Well, then you need to be honest about it and say, what's stopping me? And when you see what's stopping you, do something about it. How many want this church to be a church that we're all in? Hmm? I don't know, Kenny, I don't know how to halfway serve God. I, I mean, I've done it a lot in my life, but it wasn't on purpose. It was just drifting. But, but, but you know, I was thinking the other day, and I, I said this at a funeral I did last week. I've spent most of my adult life trying to tell people about Jesus. Most of my adult life trying to lead people to the Lord. And if you, if you are saved, trying to, trying to help you develop a better relationship and be closer. I've spent my whole life doing that. And, and you know what I've realized? I'm, I'm running out of time. Huh? And so what I've decided is, I've decided I'm going to be like old Caleb, man. He was 85 years old, and he came into the promised land, and they'd been fighting four or five years, and, 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 he, and he come up on this mountain that God had promised him 45 years before, and he remembered that God promised him that, and he looked at that mountain, and he looked at it, and he said, That's my mountain! He told Joshua, he said, Give me that mountain! He said, I was able to take it 45 years ago, and I'm still able to take it today. Give me that mountain. And he took that mountain. He took it for God. He took it. Folks, we're running out of time. You know all we got left? All we got left is to be all in for a little bit here. See, it's easier to say it now. See, see, I need some of you. I, 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 need, I need a church. I, I'm believing God to use me and to use this church to reach people. There's thousands of people in this area that if they don't make a decision for Jesus, they're going to die and go to hell. Somebody's got to care. Somebody's got to make a difference. And so I'm telling God today, I'm all in. I'm all in. But you know what I need? I need for you to be all in too. I don't mean for you to have to commit anything to me. I mean, I need for you to be all in to God. Because a lot of my things now are just dreams. Old men dream dreams. What I need is some of you young ones to have some vision to come and let's get these dreams and this vision together and let's move on for God. Let's take our land. Let's take that mountain for Jesus. Well, we get to the dreaming end. We can still dream. We can still help. We can still encourage. But together we can get her done. Together we can save people from going. Somebody said, are you just trying to build a church? I, don't, I, I, want, I, I want a strong church. I believe we got a strong church. I believe God's making it stronger. I believe He's already dealing with folks to come in that share our vision. 
I need to be, I, I need to be all in. And I need you to be all in. Hmm? That's only a thing that you and God can decide. Well, <clears throat> the church will never be any more than you are. Huh? We'll never be any more committed than you are. I have to ask myself the question every day, if, if everybody was as committed as me, would the kingdom advance any today, Lord? Some days I don't like my answer. But I can change that. I can change that. Can I tell you something? God went all in for you. Hmm? You were important enough. You were important enough that he went all in for you. He gave, he gave it all for you. Is he important enough to us that we're going to give it all to him? Just a question. I have to answer that for myself and you have to answer it for yourself. <clears throat> I want to read you scripture and then we'll quit. It's in Hebrews. It says this. It says, Therefore we also since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily ensnare us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. He said, let us run our race, lay every weight aside. You know, that's what I'm beginning to work on every day. I want to lay those weights aside. I only got a little bit of time left. I only got a couple minutes left, so I got to make them count. Did that help you any? I certainly hope so. You know, God went all in for you. He went all in for me. He loved you so much that he gave everything he had for you. His son Jesus. He went all in. And you know, I think it's only appropriate that all of us make the effort to go all in for him. You know, it's just a, a matter of making a commitment, making a decision. You know, you're just, you're just one decision away from being all God wants you to be. Hey, I, I don't want to leave today without giving you an opportunity if you... If you're not right with the Lord. Now, I know maybe some of you have been saved, you've been baptized, you've joined churches all over. That's all fine. We should do all that. But in your heart, are you right with God? And if you're not, I want to say a little prayer. Some of you have never prayed this. You've never made the commitment to ask Jesus into your heart. Whatever. If you're not right with God, pray this prayer with me. Father, I want to be saved. I want you to control my life. So right now, I give you my life, and I ask you to make a change in me. I want to serve you. I want to live for you. But I don't know how. So I'm trusting you to take me and help me and use me. Jesus, I ask you to be the Lord of my life. And I thank you for that right now and pray it in your name, Jesus. Amen. Hey, if you've prayed that prayer, give me a call. I'd like to send you some information and help you get on your way with the Lord. Maybe you didn't pray it, but you'd like to. Just tell the counselor that you'd like to ask Jesus into your heart, and they'll be happy to pray with you. Hey, I enjoy the time we get to spend together. Thank you for spending a few minutes and, and listening. And, and I'm just believing God to do some big things in your life. I want him to bless you. So as we leave today, I just speak the blessings of God into your life. I speak his goodness into you, and I believe him to do things for you that will pull you closer and draw you closer to him than you've ever been before. Hey, as we leave, I want you to know that I love you. More important than that, I want you to know that God loves you.